I know I'm gonna marry her. I know it. He said everything I wanted to hear. Love bombing 101. This man wrote the book. You all, I have heard. I have seen. But this one is extreme. Like the kind of lies that men will lie to you. This one. This lady, she shared how her ex-husband lied to her. <laughs> See, the type of lie that he lied to her, I feel like I will have fall for it. I feel like most women will fall for it because it's also smooth. <laughs> Let me roll the clip for you all to watch to the end. Nine minutes video, then we'll come back and talk about it. But while you're watching, if you have anything interesting to share, can you put it down in the comment section? Let's go ahead and watch the videos together and I'll be back at the end of the video. Okay, so things that my pathologically lying ex-husband lied about. Backstory. I'm going to try to get as much of this as I can into this video. Because um, <laughs> I hate when people say follow for part two um but i'm gonna try all right back story number one we met in march of 2020 georgia got shut down locked down um two and a half weeks later we got married january of 2021 and we were divorced august of 2021 so keep in mind that this story is spanning march of 2020 until about april actually excuse me june of 2021 because i kicked him out the house on his birthday so um we met online facebook dating and hinge i will never do online dating again um mm -hmm. but that is where i met him my tire blew on 285 just before boulder crest um <laughs> on my way to our first date clearly that was a sign i didn't listen but my tire blew and he met me at a gas station. Um, we were supposed to be meeting at Cheesecake Factory, but because the tire blew, he met me at a gas station, fixed my tire, then took me to go get another tire, paid for it. And I just thought, oh my God, this is the beginning of a beautiful romantic story. Yeah. Boy, was I wrong. Huh. So things he lied about. Every morning he would get on the phone with his brother. We'll call his brother John. He would get on the phone with John and he would be like, hey, babe, um, John said good morning. And I'm in the bathroom doing my hair because I still had to go to work at this time. And so I would just say, hey, John, you know, call out, hey, John. And, you know, he would he would relay back and forth what I said to John, what John said to me. I never actually talked to John on the phone. Um, and so he would be like, you know, I can't wait for COVID to be over. Me and my girl, we're going to come to see y'all. I can't wait for auntie to meet her. Side note, his parents were deceased, are deceased, excuse me. Um, so he was like, I can't wait for you guys to meet her. Like, yeah. she, I know I'm gonna marry her. I know it. He said everything I wanted to hear. Love bombing 101, this man wrote the book. Huh. So he talked to his brother every day. He talked to his friends every day in front of me. Um, he would be on the phone laughing, cutting up, you know, cracking jokes, telling them, hey, she said, hey, you know, um, tell, just having conversation, like a normal conversation. I didn't think anything of it. It wasn't until he got kicked out of my house in June of 2021 that I found out every single phone call was made up. He was never on the phone. I don't know. Those of you who are watching, you're probably like, there's no way. Mm -hmm. Listen to what I'm saying. Everything I'm telling you can be verified. Every single phone call he ever had um, was made up. Wow. The phone calls where he called to pay his car off, made up. The phone call to the realtor when we were looking at houses, made up. The phone call to the bank for them to release the money for the house that he signed his name for, made up. Every phone call was made up. His brother every day, he and his brother had not spoken since 2015 when his mother died. I found that out later on. He made up every phone call. He had no friends, but yet every phone call would be my friend this, my friend that. The second lie, his job. He told me when I first met him out the gate that he was a VP at his company. He had been transferred from California to Georgia and he was in the process of you know, getting, getting himself settled. He was looking to buy a house. 
his job um, was VP of a major condiment company. I won't say the name because I don't want to get sued. Um, but he said that his job was VP at that company. Damn. It is fair to note he paid every bill. He paid all the bills. He gave me spending money. Like, wow. even though we were quarantined, locked down in my little townhouse, uh -huh. again, this story was always he's looking for, he's he's trying to buy a house. So when we got together, it was, we need to buy a house together. Like, this is forever. We're going to have a family. Uh -huh. Let's go ahead and find a house. Uh -huh. So the lie was, is that he was a, v he was a VP at his company. Um, and he maintained that lie every day. Truth is... He was a temp. He called me from work all the time. <laughs> I may have to make a different video to explain how he was able to lie with the work stuff. So he would call me and he would pretend to reprimand <laughs> employees who couldn't see that he had a Bluetooth thing in his ear. He would pretend to reprimand them in front of me. He would pretend to take phone calls from the company president who needed his help on something. He forged emails that he showed me from the company president asking him, you know, we need to get this up and running. We need to do this project. We need to do that. Um, it is scary how brilliant he was and how much energy he put into the lie. But he was a temp. He was a temp forklift driver. There's nothing wrong with a forklift driver. But he was pretending to be a VP. Third lie, housing. He told me he was looking to buy a house. We got together and we started looking at houses. I found a beautiful five bedroom, six bath house in Smyrna, Georgia that was gorgeous. It was brand, it was, um, brand new construction build. And I love the house. The house was listed for 699000 He showed me paperwork from Chase Bank saying that he was approved for a mortgage for 750000 Yeah. <laughs> I watched as he put in an all-cash offer on this $699,000 house. I watched him sign his name to a legally binding document for an all cash offer. The reason why the house fell through was because the builder did not want to finish the basement. We were requesting that the basement get finished. Yeah. He did not want to, so he declined our offer and took the offer of another couple who didn't need the basement finished. Okay. That's the only reason why that house fell through. I see now where God's grace protected me because well it really protected him because legally I was not his wife so I was not on the mortgage for that home so third lie had to do with housing fourth lie had to do with um baby so I got pregnant lost the baby I was sad at the time I am not anymore um but lost the baby had to have a dnc when I was in the hospital the doctor called him to let him know, you know, she's she'll be discharged because again, this is COVID, so you could not go in the hospital at the time when I had the surgery. So the doctor called him and said, you know, she's going to be released in an hour and a half. He pretended to be his own executive assistant, and so he said, you know, Mr. James is in a board meeting, but I'm his executive assistant, David. How can I help you? You can let me know what's going on. Obviously, the doctor wouldn't do that. So she just said, you know, please let him know that Miss So-and-so um, will be ready for pickup in an hour and a half. He told the doctor um, he's in a board meeting until about um, for, an, for about another 30 minutes and then he'll be on his way. I should have only been in the hospital for an hour and a half. I was there for three hours because, again, he was a temp forklift driver, so he couldn't get off work. But I didn't know that at the time. So those are just some of the things that my pathological lying oh. ex-husband did. <laughs> There's so much more. Wow. I have severe PTSD. Wow. And I know it's my fault. I know that I did not trust myself. I did not, I did not pay attention to the United Nations of red flags. Yeah. I did not pray. And I am paying the consequences for that. Yeah. 
so there's nothing anyone can say to me girl you was dumb i was i was desperate oh. i wanted okay. to be married i wanted a, i wanted a family and i thought it was my turn wow. and instead i i got pulled into something my brain could not even comprehend huh. and guess what guys what I just told you is only 5% of the story. Eh? <laughs> so yeah, let me know if anybody knows somebody at Lifetime. And also, um, if any of you got that any sort what? of gift cards for Stella Rosa Black, I'll take those as well. That's my story. This is just 5%. 5%. The entire lies during the marriage. Five percent. I cannot imagine what twenty percent would be. This is mind blowing. You all, what is your take on this video? Can you put your thoughts, your comments, your opinion down in the comment section? I personally cannot wait for people's reaction on this video. I downloaded some stitches on this video, but we're going to play in it in part two, not in this video. So I'm going to put the link in the description box once it's uploaded. But then, you all, I love the fact that she admitted that she was desperate and probably that might make everything to be like that. And that was happened when you're so desperate, like, oh my God, I have to get married. Oh my God, I have to start a family. I'm getting too old. If you all notice, I keep pushing videos of 30, 40, unmarried, happy. See, that age is, is normal because they've put it here into we women that when you're at a certain age, you should have settled down. When you're at a certain age, you should have like four to five children. You should have at least a child or two children. Like they have put it up here to we women that this is how we should be. This is how we should live our lives. So when you've gotten to that age, if you haven't or probably, yeah, you just see somebody that just walk up to you and you won't really do your good background check you will just fall into this trap you all <laughs> he was pretending to make phone calls throughout the marriage he lied about the work see one thing about lying someone like me i don't know i feel like someone like me i don't lie so because i don't lie when you tell me you that you're a liar, if you tell me something, I don't see that you're lying. I just assume that you're saying the truth. Is later on maybe we'll have to, I will have to think about it and be like, okay, or maybe you're saying another thing all over again it will now make me say, okay, I think this person is lying because someone that doesn't lie do not expect people to lie. So that is why when you see me, when I when I'm when when I have a friend or someone that's just trying to be my friend, and I start picking, or maybe you're saying A today, tomorrow you're saying, oh, I didn't say A yesterday, I said D. I already start saying as a liar, I take you out because I, why should I lie? Like, will you beat me if I tell you this is how it is? You won't beat me now, so I don't think it's. This old love bombing and this old internet thing makes me remember a video I posted some months back or maybe a few weeks ago. This lady that met a man at an online dating as well and she's planning to get married to him 30 days that they just met. We talked about this video. A lot of people came for her. In fact, the guy's ex the guy's ex-girlfriend that he left immediately before he met this woman the guy's ex-girlfriend the friend came out to give us that oh this guy he has dated my friend before and this is the same thing he did to my friend and 
they didn't put nothing like it didn't work out and she was just saying it because this woman she's i think she's in her 40s or 50s and she's like oh my god i know you know what you know you know when you know do you really know because sometimes your mind is telling you that this thing that you're about to put your leg into is not like do not try it but maybe you're not listening and that's one thing about online i'm not trying to cancel online dating but i feel like online dating these days this is where most of this dust is it's like that is their headquarter that is where they sit down and you know because what i don't want to put the blame on her i know that she has her own side of the blame but this man we ladies we have to be careful because this man i feel like they're upgrading their skills they're upgrading they're doing more so watch the red flag normalize living at the first red flag when you start seeing some mm -mm -mm, and your mind is telling you mm -mm -mm, do your findings and leave do your findings and leave anyways let me know your thoughts about this video down in the comment section i'm going to go ahead and do the part two of this video while we watch what other people's reaction on this video so then let me know your thoughts about this video down in the comment section and thank you all so much for sticking around to this point i hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and share and subscribe and can you turn on the post notification bell so you can get notified when i upload another interesting video like this one and i'll see you all in my next video bye